belts, mission belts, everyday belts, kit belts. Uh, the evolution goes on and on. And today we're going to talk about them. Hi, I'm Dave with Tactical Hive. And we're going to talk about uh, lessons learned and kind of uh, the way forward with uh, different types of belts and building systems. This video is brought to you guys by CCW Safe. If you carry a gun, then there may be the chance one day you need legal protection. So check out uh, CCW Safe at the description below. All right, guys, talking about mission belts as a general whole, right? And uh, this is not indicative, obviously, of all the different types of tactical nylon that is out there. This is just a small sample of uh, some of the belts that I have and Miles has and, and that we've gone through over the years. Pros and cons, a lot of growth to them. This is my belt. This is Miles' belt. We have uh, belts up here from some of the major manufacturers, leading manufacturers in tactical nylon today. Some really good, innovative pieces to it. Uh, the first thing with my belt, like, you know, everybody you now see is going with the Cobra buckles. Cobra buckles are starting to get smaller and thinner, right? Sub belts and interior belts. That's another big advancement. Uh, I wouldn't say advancement of the size, like, you know, it's, it's brand new, you haven't seen them, but in the different types of material um, and, the, and the function they're designed to do, whether it's to protect your hips from a lot of load carrying for long periods of time, or it's built to quickly turn in and out of gear or turn in and out of of a holding capacity for competition. Um, but those sub belts play a huge role in them. Uh, you can see like Miles is here, his belt. They basically try to make this belt into a hybrid. What they, what they have done is made this belt into a hybrid belt. Uh, so you've got the external pouches, uh, you've got the wider pouches for uh, the attachments. And then you have my belt here that I'm running currently, thinner, uh, and it's got these dual welded attachment pieces on it. Uh, which are pretty pretty tight. The new way forward, you'll see the manufacturer using the laser cut welds on them. On them. Uh, this gives an incredibly tight, secure piece of equipment once you get it in there. Uh, the pain in the ass is getting it in there, right? So this is definitely where a Leatherman or a pair of needle nose pliers comes into effect. Um, they're, they're coming out with some pretty good different plastic accoutrements that go in there as well. But if you swap your kit around as much as I do, uh, You'll go, through, you'll go through a lot of them. On the sub belt side of the house, I run my sub belt fixed uh, there. Uh, you'll see a lot of guys will run sub belts as their regular everyday belt, which I'll do at home a lot of times. I'll take my, uh, my CR Speed or my competition belt and I will run this sub belt as my everyday belt uh, underneath. It's nice, it's soft, it's supple. Yeah, I can adjust the tension as needed. Uh, works great for my concealed carry holster and everything else. And I just run this separate. When you look at some of the new advancements and how they're manufacturing the belts, right? The thing they take into account is look at these belts and now they're, they're angled in. So they're form fitted for your hips. Like you can see how if I flip this upside down, that's the wrong way. You can see how that would pull in tight to my hips and it's actually gonna create pinch marks and bind marks right here. So putting the belt on the way it's designed is set to comfortly conform to my waist. And it helps distribute that load management across your hips more even uh, and, re and reduce friction or pinch points on your hips. And uh, it, like I said, it's a common thing against the, the major manufacturers today. On everyday belts. So this is where it all started, right? Everybody's seen these, everybody's had these, everybody's rocked these. They're, they're good belts, they're incredibly heavy. And now, now that I'm a former action guy, I have no need for this little triangle piece and it's just extra weight that I don't need to carry anymore, right? So uh, I have it for posterity stakes because I've ran this belt for a long time, but I no longer really use it anymore except for maybe at a range. Uh, good everyday belt, it's stiff, right? It's wide enough that it'll encompass my, my holster, my everyday, my concealed carry holster. So when I'm drawing, I'm not getting flex in my holster. Um, but it's soft and supple enough that I can wear it. I tend to start to stay away from this style. This is how it's designed to go on and off. What I found is trying to route this buckle through my loops is a pain. So usually when I, when I do run this belt, I take it off like this and I run it through separately. And then you're going to another sub belt system. Again, an everyday belt. We just got rid of a lot of weight and material we don't need. So no more V buckles, no more giant friction adapters, you know, a plastic small friction adapter, good Velcro, easily adjustable, and again, supports my concealed carry holster pretty well. 
uh, another sub belt. Again, you can use this as stiffeners if your belt's not stiff enough. If you haven't shot uh, in the multi-sport world uh, and you're gonna get into the multi-sport world, two significant types of belts you see a lot are uh, these different companies make them, but like CR Speed and uh, Double Alpha and people like those make these belts versus this style. <laughs> One unique thing about these, just know if you're setting up your uh, competition belt, they typically go on backwards like this, right? That gives you more workspace for all of your magazines or shotgun, whatever you're doing, but it just gives you more space up here and doesn't take away from the buckle, right? Having a good keeper on the back of this is paramount. If you don't have a good keeper, it's not uncommon to see some guy running down with his belt flopping off and hanging out. The pros and cons of these, so you'll see when you swap out, you need more pistol, you need less rifle, you need more shotgun, you need something. These pieces come off easy and you can, between stages, readjust your belt real quickly. What you'll find is you'll start to load your belt with so much ancillary pieces that these don't come pre-made pre uh, with Velcro on the inside of them. So taking the time to put Velcro on the inside or buying good, some components do come that way now. Buying that is huge because that you put your sub belt on, it'll help keep it in place. If you don't, you'll get a lot of slop and movement in your belts. This one here also, it just has a different type of pattern system. These, these double bolts, but uh, their clamp system also, easily to adjust, easy to maneuver, and you'll find yourself in the trunk of your car throwing on more shotgun or taking off more pistol as you move through it. It's a quick down and dirty on uh, the evolution of belts and some lessons learned. Really, really, really like the, the laser cuts uh, that they're doing now. Um, I'm a big fan of having the belts conform to your waist. It's so much comfortable when you're wearing long periods of time. One of my favorite things about them is having this, this slight bit of adjustment, right? So having a belt, like my, look at my current belt, and you can see I have it all taped up and it's fixed, right? Well, that's great when I'm shooting in Arizona or I'm shooting here and it's, it's hot and, and I'm wearing just slick down clothing. But when it's cold and I have on more clothing or I'm not in peak physical performance position, right? Also known as fluffy, um, <laughs> doesn't take into account. So having a belt with a small little bit of adjustment built into the, into the belt, uh, makes it way nicer. Uh, you don't have to readjust kit on the fly uh, because it won't fit due to clothing or lack of cardio. Yeah, so that is my down and dirty on belts, guys. If you like stuff like this and you want more detailed in the weeds type uh, discussion on it, consider giving uh, the Tactical Hive War Room a look. You know, it gives you direct access to, to myself and the other subject matter experts in there. Uh, and, and we can more efficiently and rapidly discuss uh, any questions you have or, or clarify things up, uh, direct access to us. Yep, so if you're interested in the war room, uh, just check the uh, additional details down below. Uh, and other than that, guys, if you like this content, like, subscribe, and share. Thanks, guys.